Welcome to the Potter training video on signaling line circuit installation. The SLC circuit provides power and communication to the detectors and modules that make up an addressable fire alarm system. Any combination of detectors and modules is allowed, and no detector or module consumes more than one SLC address on the loop. SLC is a two-wire circuit that can be wired in Class A, Class B, or Class X. Terminals on detector bases and modules allow easy connection of the SLC to devices. When wired in Class B, limited T-tapping is allowed. When wired in Class A or Class X, there is no T-tapping of the SLC circuit. Class X wiring is like Class A, but includes isolation devices before and after every module or detector on the loop. Potter does not specify wire types for the SLC loop, but that wiring needs to comply with NEC and local code. The SLC loop is limited to 50 ohms of wire resistance. To verify compliance with this requirement, go to the farthest branch on the Class B SLC circuit and create a short. Meter the circuit at the control panel, and if there is less than 50 ohms, that circuit is acceptable. This chart provides approximate cable lengths to maintain the 50 ohm resistance limitation and is based on typical wire gauge resistance calculations. Using the same concept as before, except on a Class A circuit, short the wires that would land on the Class A return terminals. If the entire circuit is less than 50 ohms, the circuit is acceptable. The pad 4dB and pad 6dB detector bases are standard bases with a locking feature for the detector head. The Potter sounder bases do not consume an SLC address, but are a subpoint of the detector. The bases are independently programmable to meet different operating scenarios. Here is a detector in a studio apartment that acts as a single station detector and only activates its sounder base on alarm. In this example, there is a multi-room apartment where two detectors operate in a multi-station scenario. Both bases sound when either of the detectors activate. Finally is a general alarm, where all the sounder bases activate when certain devices like water flow, a pull station, or a corridor smoke detector initiate an alarm condition. The sounder bases require 24 volt DC power in addition to the SLC wiring. This 24 volt power must be provided by a NAC or IO designated as sounder base power. This power type has certain attributes that make it unsuitable for use with anything other than sounder bases. The pad RB provides a programmable subpoint form C relay with a two amp contact rating at 24 volts DC and a half a amp at 125 volts AC. The pad IB is an SLC loop isolator base with two sets of terminals. The terminals marked SLC1 are for the incoming SLC from the control panel or previous device, and the terminals labeled SLC2 provide an isolated outgoing SLC branch. Let's take a moment to look at the purpose of SLC isolators. What happens if there is a wire-to-wire -wire short on this section of the SLC? The panel loses communication with all of the devices on the SLC loop. Add an isolator here, and what happens when there is a short on the circuit? The control panel only loses communication with the few devices that are wired behind the isolator module or base. While the isolators do not use an SLC address, they include an amber LED that lights when there is a short and the device is active. All input modules monitor normally open dry contacts. The modules can be assigned any of the function types indicated in this list, including pull station, water flow, supervisory, tamper, fire drill, and input and output point disables. The pad 100 PSSA and PSDA are single and dual action pull stations with die cast construction. They have a MIM module attached to the backside with flying leads that are attached to the SLC loop with wire nuts. The MIM is a miniature input module used to monitor any normally open dry contact and is installed inside an electrical box and includes flying leads instead of terminal connections. 
all of Potter's monitor module IDC inputs are limited to less than 100 ohm of wire resistance and use a 5.1K ohm end of line resistor. The TRTI twin relay twin input module includes two IDC inputs and two form C relay outputs. This module only consumes one SLC address and provides four independently mappable subpoints. The TRTI allows for two class B or one class A IDC input circuit. When wiring in class A, the dip switch labeled CLA is turned on. The OROI provides one relay and one class B monitoring input, both of which are independently programmable. The DIMM dual input modules IDC circuits can be wired either in class A or B. When wiring in class A, the dip switch labeled CLA is turned on. The SIM single input module gives us a single programmable input. The pad 100RM provides one form C relay output. The pad 100ZM is used to monitor two wire conventional smoke detectors. This module needs 24 volts DC auxiliary power in addition to the SLC. The module supervises the presence of the auxiliary power, eliminating the need for an end of line supervision relay. When wiring the pad 100ZM in class A, the dip switch labeled CLA is turned on. The pad 100 NAC also requires 24 volts DC auxiliary power. This module can control one class A or one class B non-synchronized notification appliance circuit. This module can also be used in releasing applications, which requires a special end of line diode resistor assembly. The pad 100 LED is an addressable LED output used anywhere a remote indicator is required. The pad 100 LEDK is a key switch input and an LED output that can be used anywhere a programmable key protected input is needed. The pad 100 IM is an SLC loop short circuit isolator. The module includes terminals for incoming SLC and provides two isolated outgoing SLC circuit branches. While the isolator does not use an SLC address, it includes an amber LED that lights when there is a short and the device is active. Addressing Potter SLC devices is done in a binary method. There are seven dip switches, each switch doubles the value of the previous. For an address of 90, turn on switches 2, 8, 16, and 64 because when added together their value equals 90. This list of multifunction modules and detectors all use single SLC addresses and provide independently programmable subpoints. In the example shown here, an OROI module has an SLC address of 3. The relay is a subpoint output at address 3.1, and subpoint 3.2 is the IDC input. When reporting events by point to a central station, the SLC address set at the detector or module will be transmitted along with the event code associated with the subpoint type. A DIM module set at address 3 with two different device types like a water flow and a supervisory switch will send distinct event codes for both devices using the same address. For any additional questions, please contact tech support at the phone number or email listed on the screen. And as always, don't forget to follow us on social media.